I'm Jessica Sowers, owner of Body Bliss Connection. I'm Jamie Marich. I'm a clinical trauma specialist, expressive arts therapist, author, and co-founder of Yoga Unchained. I am also the co-founder of Yoga Unchained. <sighs> Warrior two, Vera Badrasana two. So as always, we'll come to our standing mountain posture to find our nice grounding base first. Let's take a nice deep inhale and exhale. Shift the weight into the right foot and take a large step back with that left foot. Our back toes are going to rotate 90 degrees so they face the long edge of the mat while the front toes stay pointed towards the front short edge of the mat. We open our body to the side of that mat, let the arms extend, and on an exhale, bend into that front knee. We want to be mindful of the front knee, again, allowing it to track over that second and third toe, keeping it in a nice straight line. And as that knee bends, we want to ensure that the knee is stacked over top of the ankle and not coming out in front of that ankle. ankle. Press down equally through both the front and back foot and into those three points of connection on each foot. And sometimes our toes like to try to grip the mat to hold and help us balance, but we lift the toes up, give them a wiggle around, and then very gently let them rest back down onto the ground. Our abdomen is pulled in to help keep this spine nice and long, nice and strong. Shoulders are stacked over top of the hips as we look out over that front middle finger. One more deep inhale. Exhale, soften the arms, straighten that front leg. Let's rotate that front foot to the side wall of the mat. We'll go ahead and rotate the back toes, our left toes towards the short back edge of the mat. Right toes stay facing towards that long edge. We're switching sides here. Deep breath in and on the exhale, bend into that front knee. Arms reach over each leg. Again, being mindful of that front knee, allowing it to track over the second and third toe and stay stacked over top of the ankle. Activate through that abdomen to lengthen the spine, reach the crown of the head up and a gentle tuck of the chin. And in this posture, while the feet are pressing down and fully connecting to the earth, we want to invite the inner thighs to squeeze in towards each other and lift up to help us create more length in the spine. It's also more activating through this posture as well. Let's take one more nice deep inhale. Next, exhale, slowly let the arms float down, straighten that front leg, rotate the toes forward, and gently walk the feet back in, find a comfortable spot. Uh, I know, huh? How did that feel? In this moment today, I feel such a nice opening in my back with that, and it's interesting to really break it down like this with that proper detail to alignment. I'm even having an insight that I'm having such a nice physical experience with these warrior poses when I am paying attention to that detail because mm -hmm. I've struggled with the warrior poses over the years especially feeling like my feet are too strained or I can't hold them as long as I feel I want to mm -hmm. and yeah that light bulbs coming on for me that maybe it is a little bit more about alignment check I love this one um, I like it better than warrior one I think because there's even more of a dancier quality you can have with the arms and mm -hmm. just do a lot of fun things with the arms mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. how's this pose for you I really enjoy this pose. This pose is very um, it, um, powerful to me. Mm -hmm. It helps me to create a little bit of focus. So I like to take this pose, even if I'm feeling overwhelmed in life, mm -hmm. like things just keep coming at you sometimes. Oh yeah. And I, I don't know where to start sometimes. So taking that posture in Warrior Two, really stretching into it, finding the strength in there, mm -hmm. letting those muscles get heated up a little bit, mm -hmm. taking a few breaths. Um, when I come out of it, I feel a lot more focused, a lot more able to take things one at a time, process through them, and go on with life. Just work your way through it. So this is this is a good one for me in that in that aspect. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, we were talking about the arm modifications. Yeah. Because I think we'll talk here as we go about some challenges people have with the pose. But sometimes it is a matter of holding the arms in one position. Mm -hmm. But you can do a lot with palms up, palms down, palms up, palms down rather, mm -hmm. to see if there's a difference you notice in the body. Mm -hmm. Sometimes a real fun clinical thing I'll work in with people is to practice boundaries. Mm -hmm. So kind of where do you stop? Or do you end maybe playing with the edge a little bit, but knowing that fundamentally this is your bubble around you mm -hmm. and you, you kind of control how far you go. Mm -hmm. So 
Uh, other modifications based on challenges you've seen students have in this post. So again, we can lessen the width of the stance. Mm. We can not step so wide apart. Um, also, to put a less of a bend in that front knee is an option as well. That can take some of the challenge out of the posture as well. Mm -hmm. um, balance issues, um, you can use a chair, which yeah. we like the chair. So I'm gonna grab that and show yeah, us how we can do that. that. Chair is truly one of my favorite yoga props. So finding our chair, we'll sit towards the front edge again, connecting our sits bones to the front edge so our spine can sit up nice and long. And we'll rotate the front foot so it would face forward. And our back foot will start to rotate the hip a little bit, step back with that back leg, and then rotate the toes so they're at a 90 degree angle. We sit the body up tall, our core muscles are very active, and we do actively press down into the feet. Mm. Arms stretch out over each leg, and then we rotate and look out over that front finger. We want to keep the core active and keep pressing down into those feet because that helps us to build that muscle memory and that strength to perhaps help us sustain in a standing posture as well right. when the time comes. Right. Interesting choice of the word sustain uh, from the viewpoint of modifications, trauma sensitivity. So important to note, particularly if you have a longer length of time in yoga practice that where you may like holding this pose out for a long length of time, people who are first starting clients, students who are new to yoga, just kind of remember what it was like not being able to hold poses out so long. Mm. So don't stay in it for so long and mm. set those muscles on fire. Get them warmed up, create a little bit of heat, come out of it, take a nice forward fold or a stretch, and then revisit it maybe two more times. Sure. That'll help to build that, that awareness around it. That'll help to build the strength up, but also it doesn't overwhelm the individual to where they hate the posture completely. <laughs> nice. And as we discussed in the Warrior One video, if it feels differently on one side than the other, nothing to be ashamed about. It's just something that happens in our bodies. Mm -hmm. Each side is different. Yep. Mm -hmm. So thank you for joining us for Warrior Two. Thank you. <laughs>